If you're struggling to deal with your partner's past, maybe you recently found out that your girlfriend or even your wife has had more sexual partners than you knew about or that you assumed or that she told you about, then this video is for you. I've been in this situation three times in my life and to be honest, it's brought up the same feelings each time, but the third time I managed to deal with it a lot better. So I thought I'd share my words of wisdom with you about what I learned. First, we're gonna talk about how it affects men. Secondly, why women do it. And thirdly, how to handle it, what to do about it. You can just skip to the end, of course, but I think it's better to go through the process because then it kind of makes sense. It puts it into context better. The three main ways it affects men are the disgust element, let's just be honest, unfair trade, which is interesting, I'll explain in a minute, and comparison and insecurity. Okay, disgust, right? Let's just get to the point. The sensation, the reflex that some people have, I know I had before, when you found out your partner's been with a lot of guys and you start imagining that, is disgust. And that doesn't mean she's disgusting, okay? Let's talk about the meaning of the word disgust. So disgust is a physical reaction to an external thing that could cause contamination. So it could cause poisoning, it makes you recoil. It's like if someone handed you a moldy piece of fruit, not comparing people to a moldy piece of fruit, but if someone handed you something like that, then you'd probably go, ugh like that. You know, you don't want to touch it, you don't want to be near it, you certainly don't want to ingest it into your body because there's a possibility that it might harm you, possibility that it might contaminate you. So this is a primal reflex thing. Your subconscious mind, your primitive reactions don't know about STI tests or condoms or the fact that it was a long time ago or anything like that. But you just have this reflex of, ugh, it's, there's a possible contamination when you know she's been with other guys. Again, this might not be going on in your head. You won't think this. It's like, oh, but she's been tested. It's fine. But that's often how the body responds. So let's just be upfront about it. That's how it feels. It can feel like disgust. Secondly, unfair trade, right? This is interesting. Men and women have different prizes to give away. So a woman's prize is sex. A man's prize is commitment. A woman, let's be honest, a woman can get sex faster than you can order a takeaway. If she just went down the pub and chat to a few guys, she, she'd find someone to take her home, no problem. It's not hard for women to get sex. In fact, it's often quite hard for them to <laughs> not get sex. They have to turn down offers a lot of the time, especially if they're attractive. And even if the woman's not attractive, then she can easily get sex as well. For a guy, it's not that easy. We have to actually make an effort. You have to go out and try to be charming and try to be different from the other guys and you know make an effort seduce her and all the rest of it. What a man holds back, what a man's prize is, is commitment. There's a difference between, you know, going out and banging a hundred guys and finding one decent guy who will want to be with her, potentially for the rest of his life, commit to her, which means not having sex with anybody else, again, possibly forever, and share his resources and his time with her and protect her and all that. A lot of guys are quite fearful of commitment and if you think about it, it's for good reason because it can put you in quite a vulnerable position. First of all, again, you're saying, I will not have sex with anybody else, possibly for the rest of my life. You can share my time with me, my space with me. Guys really value freedom. They'd like to be able to do what they want with who they want. You know, no one's badgering them at 10 p.m. when they're down the pub with the boys having a beer, that kind of thing. A lot of guys value freedom. And another element of this is potential pain, especially if you've been through a divorce or you've had a bad experience, you've been burnt before. If you really commit to a woman and then further down the line, maybe you've got married, maybe you have kids, maybe um, you, know, you bought a house together. Further down the line, if she decides to leave you, then you can be devastated. Now, I made a lot of videos about divorce and I'm not gonna talk about that. But a lot of guys are quite wary of that, especially if they've been burned before. So there's good reasons why guys hold back commitment. So when they give commitment to a woman, so they give their prize to her, finally, and then realize or find out that she's given her prize away to maybe dozens of guys, maybe anyone who paid her some attention. It's a bit like spending a thousand pounds on something that you think is valuable and then finding out that 50 people rented it for a tenner. It might leave you feeling a bit cheated. The third element is simple, insecurity and comparison. You know, I had this when I was very young, when I was uh, in my early 20s, I dated a girl. I think I'd slept with five people by then. I found out her number was much, much higher. And I felt insecure about it because I felt like she'd had the experiences and the, the worldliness and the adventures that I felt I kind of missed out on because I'd been in a long-term relationship. I felt like she was 10 miles ahead and you know it'd be impossible for me to catch up. And it's really hard for you to feel like the man in the relationship if 
you know, she's a lot more experienced than you. Obviously, I'm not saying this doesn't work for anyone. I'm sure there's plenty of relationships where the guy was a virgin and she slept with a few people and they make it work and it doesn't bother them. I'm sure that happens, but I don't think I'm the only one who's been in that situation. I think it's probably quite common for guys to feel that way, especially if they're young or less experienced. If you're with a woman who you love, who you've given commitment to, and it turns out she's been with a lot more partners than you think, and she says, do you know what, I'm proud of every minute, I had a great time, then in your mind, you're thinking, you're comparing yourself to all those guys, right? You had a great time. She didn't have bad sex with most of them. She had great sex, you know, she enjoyed herself, which means you're gonna be comparing yourself. So unless you're a seven foot tall billionaire rock god Adonis with a 12 inch cock, chances are a lot of those guys are better than you in one way or another. So you've gotta kind of live with that. And yeah, I'm sure a lot of guys are enlightened enough or mature enough to be able to deal with that. But I think the average bloke might struggle with that kind of thing. So why do women do it? Okay, I can't speak for women and I can't speak for all women and life is messy and complicated, right? But what I have seen in my 45 years of being alive is a lot of women who are very promiscuous didn't really come from very happy homes. They, uh, there might have been neglect, there might even have been sexual abuse or trauma, there might have been a, a father figure missing, no one told them that they loved them, something like that. There's, there's often something in the background. And again, not always, she might just like dick. This might seem judgmental, but I, I don't think happy, healthy women just tend to give it away to every guy that gives them attention. Some women sleep with guys, and even a lot of guys, because they give them attention, because they are looking for closeness, they're looking for security, they're looking for stability. And women often feel that they need to give away sex, that's part of the, uh, the contract. If I give away sex, I may get this in return. And a lot of women go around this cycle again and again and again, giving away what they have, giving away their prize in the hope that they're gonna get what they're looking for and they don't get it, they don't find it. So you've gotta have some empathy for this, like empathy and compassion. So women do it for different reasons. And it's important to understand that because that kind of leads us on to the next bit, which is how do you handle it? How to deal with it, how to cope with these emotions, how to reframe it, uh, stop thinking about it so much and, and move on in one way or another. I'm gonna be super judgmental again, and I know life is complex and nuanced, and you can't separate people into categories, but for this purpose, we're gonna have two categories. So category A, you speak to her and she says, do you know what, I'm proud of it. I, I had a great time, shagged loads of guys, you know, I just like, I love different cocks, I like being taken out to different places, I had a great time, and uh, you know, I'm not ashamed of it at all. Caveat, a lot of women will say that to protect themselves. So you don't actually know that that's true, but it might be. Category B is when she says, look, I did these things in the past, and to be honest, I had some good times, but a lot of them weren't good times. I can see why I did what I did, but it didn't really make me happy. You know, and I've done a lot of work on myself. Maybe I've, I've done counseling, done a lot of self-development stuff. And I look back on that girl that I was, and I just wouldn't do those things now. Now, again, oversimplifying, but in my opinion, those are two different things. So if she's in that category where she slept with a lot of guys, doesn't see a problem with it, and had an overwhelmingly positive experience, then you've got to ask yourself, why wouldn't she do it again? Statistically, women who were very promiscuous are more likely to cheat and they're more likely to leave you. Uh, divorce rates are higher when a woman's very promiscuous, especially if it gets to a point in the relationship where things aren't going so well, you hit a rough patch, which you know inevitably happens, in every relationship long term. Why wouldn't she just take the easy route out? Because she's done it before. If she's used to hopping from one guy to another whenever a new opportunity comes up, let's call it shiny penis syndrome, why would she change now? Yes, it's possible that you're the special one and all, all of a sudden she just decided to change, but it's a pretty low chance of that and you're taking a big risk. It's a very high risk relationship. So in my opinion, it may not be worth it. On the other hand, if you're talking to your woman and she opens up and she says, look, I did these things and I wouldn't do them now, you know? And you have an open, honest conversation and you recognize that you did a lot of things in your past that you definitely wouldn't do now. But you look back at the boy that you were, traumatized as he was, and you recognize that there were reasons, there were causes why you acted a certain way and you learned those lessons, right? Then you can have that discussion with her and then you can kind of start to reconcile. And here's the important bit, right? Then you can look at it as a gift. You can look at it as a gift and her as a gift because 
This wonderful woman who you love, right? You already love her. She's the same woman, even though she's not the fantasy that you had in your mind. She's the real person. And bear in mind, even though you know a few more details, you don't know everything about her. You don't know how she felt while she was doing those things. You don't know all the other details in her life. You can start to look at it as an opportunity to care for someone who's been through a lot and come out a better person, come out on the other side and been honest with you and open with you. And now it's a chance for you to heal together. You can heal together, you can grow together and you can flourish together. And that is a beautiful thing. And if this helps you at all, or you've had any experience with this, or you just have any questions or comments, please drop them in the comments below, because I'd love to hear what other people's experiences too. I'll see you soon, my friend.